Hello everyone, bringing you a video today looking at this and the trousers that go with it. We'll also look at the boots as well. This is a British number no. one Mark II MBC suit. Now I've previously made a video looking at the CB suit, the chemical and biological suit which preceded this. This is the first true MBC suit with an attached hood. The CB suit comes with a se separate hood referred to as the head and neck protector. This is the first design of MBC suit introduced well, as standard issue for British use, which includes the attached hood at the top here, as you can see, which would obviously lead to the nickname of these, uh, the Noddy suit. The MBC suit is designed to give protection from chemical and biological agents and to some degree in a nuclear uh, radiological environment as well. The design would progress through various different marks. This is, as I say, the first of the, the true MBC suits, which would be followed by the Mark III and the Mark IV. I'm not sure quite what mark we're on now, but anyway, eventually they'd be made in camouflage material and so forth. At this early stage, this looks very similar to the CB suit in the mix of green and grey cloth. The green cloth is sort of over the load bearing area, is over the shoulder and around the edge of the, the hood and so forth to give a bit more uh, of a, a bearing surface, a bit more resistance to wear in those particular areas. But the, the design has advanced a little bit from the CB suit, so we're going to talk about that. Before we talk about the smock in more detail, as it is on the mannequin and the trousers as well, of course, which I'll, I'll lay out as best I can, we'll have a look at these as they come in their primary packaging with the labels and so forth. We'll just have a quick look at that now and get back to talking about this in a bit more detail. So the first thing we'll look at in its packaging is the smock. And you can see here the labeling of this when it's in its primary standard packaging. Smock protective MBC number one Mark II, part of CH23B, which is the 23B is the RAF the prefix on the stock code, the store code. So you've got the NATO stock number up top there for the smock specifically, and then you have the NATO stock number here for the suit. So you have both of those there. And then you have suit protective NBC number one Mark II, and this is a size medium. You have that with the, you again have the contract number here, made by Remploy in this instance. Packaged August 1971. This August 1970 date here will be the cloth date for when the charcoal impregnated cloth was manufactured. So this is a relatively early example of the NBC suit number one Mark II. These date from around the very early 1970s, perhaps very late 1960s. I've seen, I believe, a 1970 dated example, which had a 1969 dated uh, cloth uh, manufacturing date. So they're, they're quite an early, uh, early 70s thing, and they would be used alongside the CB suit at that time. In fact, you see CB suits marked CB suit only uh, to differentiate them from this because obviously this has an integral hood. The CB suit had to be issued with a head and neck protector separate to the smock. So they were not interchangeable in that regard. So that's the smock in its primary standard packaging there. The next thing to talk about is the trousers and these have very similar details. You can see the two stock numbers on the label there, the packing date and the fabric date and so forth, all on the label there. A slightly slimmer package, uh, these fold down a little bit more neatly, elastic bands inside there. So it's an outer plastic packaging, in the case of the smock and the trousers, outer, outer plastic packaging which can be torn open, you've got a notch at the end there, and then inside this protective outer thick plastic outer layer is a vacuum packed uh, bag in there which, which uh, contains the trousers and they are kept uh, fresh in there. Obviously the, the charcoal uh, will react with the air the activated charcoal will react with uh, contaminants in the air, even in small quantities. So keeping them vacuum packed is important to make, so make sure the suit will serve its function as it should. So that's the, the trousers in their primary packaging there. So getting back to talk about the smock in more detail, this is essentially an adaption of the CB suit design. The main change being the addition of the fixed hood, which we have here, as you can see. We've got elastic in the back there to tighten it around the neck. We have a draw cord at the front. Obviously we will turn this inside out as we progress through the video to have a look at the, the internal details as well. We'll get a shot of the label here as well, uh, as we have that on view here. We'll get a close-up of that now. And you can see this reads, Suit Protective MBC Number 1 Mark II Smock with hood attached, and that's a key distinction from the CB suit. The NATO stock number beneath that, and then the size, which is large, and then XBR, the manufacturer, 1971, the manufacturing date and then the contract number underneath that which is quite useful it gives a an indication of 1970s early 1970s contract numbers there as you can see the hood has a draw cord as said you can see here very simple with a rubber stop to 
allow you to, to draw that in and tighten that off. A very simple design, no frills. This is a d designed to be a disposable garment. It will become contaminated in an actual chemical environment or bi radio biological or radiological environment and will then need to be disposed of after a certain period of time. Uh, it protects the uniform, of course, but the web equipment is actually worn over it. So that leads to its own problems of decontamination and so forth, which is perhaps a topic for another video. There's not much more to see at the front here. Uh, it's other than the attached hood, very similar to the uh, CB suit which preceded it. We'll talk a little bit more about the, uh, we'll move this around and we'll talk a little bit more about the design features. Looking at the left-hand side of the suit here, I'll just pop the hood up so you can see the design of the hood at the rear there. You can see how it's pinched in by that piece of elastic, which we'll see more clearly when we look at this turned inside out. And you can see the cloth coming over the shoulder here to reinforce where the webbing would bear upon this. A nice additional feature, which we now have on the arm here, is a pen pocket. And this is something that will be carried forward in subsequent designs. Just something to make the design a little bit more functional in the field. The pen pocket is very useful, obviously, if you're doing map work and so forth. It's actually quite a useful thing to have as part of the design. You can see the back of the arm there is reinforced again with this green cloth to basically, for the point of view, if you're crawling forward on the ground, or if your elbow where your elbow's contacting the ground, this gives you a nice reinforcing piece there. The end of the cuff, as with the CB suit before it, has this Velcro uh, adjustment tab, which you can see there will touch and close as it would have been, with a bit of cotton tape there, which means it's, it's more easy to manipulate this wearing gloves, which is an important part of the design, of course. You'll be wearing gloves, which were discussed with the CB suit. I won't be talking about them in depth in this video, and they were discussed in the CP suit, they basically don't change the white inner and black outer gloves. So we'll be talking about the boots in this video, but not the gloves. But that allows you to adjust the cuff in there. If we look down on the side of the smock here, you can see that this also includes a Velcro tab here, which means it can be tightened in around the hips. And this, again, exactly the same design with a, a tab allowing you to manipulate that Velcro closure with gloves on. It just makes it that little bit easier. Looking at the back of the smock here, we can see it's entirely covered with this green cloth. Just lift the hood out of the way. You can see that here, the entire back side of the smock where the web equipment, Bergen, etc., whatever you're wearing is going to bear against your back is fu fully reinforced with this green sort of flaxy material, this uh, thin flaxy material. As I say, designed as a disposable garment, so it's not the highest quality materials, but that's not the idea behind it, of course. Um, so that's, uh, that's there to prevent wear and tear to the, the sort of impregnated cloth underneath. Uh, there's not a huge amount more to see on the right hand side there's no pen pocket or anything on that arm but it's otherwise essentially the same so we'll turn this inside out now and have a look at the interior so here we have the inside of the smock the front of it and you can see the charcoal line cloth here the reason for the very dark black finish on the inside here is that this is charcoal lined obviously that allows air to it's somewhat breathable but obviously filters the air uh, as it passes through that's the idea of it is it, it reduces uh, contamination and quite effective from that point of view. Uh, certainly better than nothing uh, and compared to Eastern Bloc MBC gear, uh, their protective suits, their chemical suits and so forth, which were just essentially heavy rubber. This is more comfortable to wear. It's not comfortable, perhaps unless in the winter time, it's another warmer layer over the top. Uh, during the summer months, training in these was, was not pleasant. Uh, as many men will attest, I'm sure as many veterans who, who in the comment section will attest, but they are better than the, the Eastern Bloc equivalent from that point of view in terms of comfort. And that's an important factor, obviously, because you're going to end up being becoming exhausted very quickly if you're wearing something which in hot weather saps your energy through causing you to, to overheat. And something that's slightly better from that point of view is obviously advantageous for a soldier. The hood, uh, as I say, is lined with the green material. You can just see the, the details of that there. We'll have a look at the elastic and so forth if we move this round. We'll move this round now and have a look at one of the arms. There's not a huge amount of detail to see on the inside, but I'll give the opportunity to, to have a look at the construction and so forth. I've moved this round now and you can see the construction seam, the seams coming up onto the shoulder there and the, uh, the construction of the sleeve there, the way it joins the body of the smock. And you can see the elastic on the hood here. Uh, which we'll get a better look of when we look at the back of this. And you can see the back here, uh, obviously simple construction. You have those seams uh, letting the arms in there. The front and back is basically two big panels which join underneath the arm. And then up on the hood here, you can see the elastic which pulls that in around the base of the neck or the, the back of the head there and the label, which we've already had a look at. 
that's the inside of the smock. We'll have a look at the trousers here now and in their turn they're very very similar to those issued with the CB suit, in fact almost identical. You can see down on the leg here we have the two velcro adjustment tabs again with the the webbing strip there to make them more easy to manipulate when you're wearing gloves to tighten the lower leg in around the boots. You can see again we have the green cloth here as a, a more of a bearing surface uh, for where your knees are going to be hitting the ground and so forth. We do have, if we look here, a pocket worked in, an outer pocket there as you can see, one on each side just by using the lining material, using this green material here, having that section loose and just stitched round, it creates a pocket on each side. So you essentially have two hip pockets, if you will. We open this up at the front here, you can see we have the, this uh, two triangular sections here worked in, which means the waist can be adjusted in. So you have a Velcro tab there, and it gives you quite a bit of adjustment in the waist there for you know different waist sizes. So we have that adjustment there, and you can see here, the two on each side, you have a, a cotton tape stitched on with a loop worked into it. You can see there, and the cloth braces inside, which simply loop round and tie off the front. We'll have a look at those when we turn these inside out to have a look at the interior. But very, very simple design, essentially the same as those issued with the CB suit at this stage. And the design of trousers, other than the material they're made of, wouldn't change hugely. Obviously, it's a very simple design and they are functional for what they're supposed to do. So we'll uh, we'll turn these inside out now and have a look at the interior. So we have the, the front of the uh, inside of the trousers here. You can see that section there where the waist adjusts in. You can also see on each side the cotton tape has been doubled over and stitched to give something extra for the stitching to bite into. This is the point where the braces tie off at the front. So these need to be strongly attached, obviously, because it's the point of support for the trousers. And obviously we have the black charcoal lining, as you can see here. Looking at the back of the trousers here, you can see again the braces are strongly stitched off there to the, to, the, to the rear. They are stitched together, they're captive at the rear there, so they just loop over the shoulders and tie off to those loops at the front to support these. And then in the middle here, we have the label, which we'll get a shot of now. And you can see that reads, Suit Protective MBC Number 1 Mark II Trousers, again with the NATO stock number underneath, and we have again size large, XBR the manufacturer, the date of 1971, and the contract number underneath. So this is a matched set, which I managed to pick up. Uh, both the same manufacturer, both the same date. So as said, I'm not going to cover the gloves in this video. They were looked at in the video, considering the CB suit. You have white cotton inner gloves with black uh, long uh, outer gloves made of rubber, which are worn over the top as protection. We will, however, talk about the NBC boots in this because they weren't covered with the CB suit. In the 1960s documentation regarding the CB suit, MBC boots aren't mentioned. They're to be worn with rubber boots, which is to say rubber Wellingtons, as we would know them in civilian terms, and the DMS boot. So boots with rubber soles, essentially. The RAF specifically mentioned wearing rubber boots because their boots at, during the 1960s were commonly still leather soled. So that was what was to be worn with the CB suit at that time. We have here, though, Overboots MBC number one Mark II to accompany the suit, NBC number one Mark II. So these are in their primary packaging here. They're just sealed in a plastic bag. They would have been attached together. We're using elastic band here, which has unfortunately perished even with it being in the plastic there, protected. And you can see we have a November 1975 date there. So the various details on the front there, as you can see, and I'll just get a reverse of this label before we look at an unpackaged pair of boots, just to show you how they function. So we have another label here, which I have retained from the boots we're going to look at out of their packaging. These were dated 1976. And this allows me to show you the fitting instructions on the back here. So this, obviously you can pause here should you wish to have a look at this, but you can see the diagram of how these are to be laced. And they have four attachment points for the laces. Uh, so you obviously have the instructions there, which you can read yourself. I won't read through all of them here. But we'll get a pair of the boots in now with these in frame, with the instructions in frame, just to give you an idea of, of what these look like out of the packaging. So we have the MBC boot here, the number one Mark II, which looks like just a big black mass of rubber at the moment. But if I stretch this out, you can see, let me open this out at the top, you can see the shape of a boot come in there. You've got the ankle opening, you've got the, well, the opening up at the top here, which you can see in there, all the way down, very wide. And then you have the 
the toe of the boot here and the sole is adjustable to pull the boot into something of a shape conforming to the, the boots within. Obviously the DMS boot is worn within this. So as you can see by the lacing pattern here, the lacing diagram here rather, excuse me, you have the laces attached at the front here to this eyelet. It then loops back to these two eyelets here, which are drawn in. You pull these here. You should then tie a knot in the laces here before looping it around to the back of the boot where there is another eyelet which pulls the heel up. It should be looped through, the, through here, brought back around to the front of the ankle and tied off here. So you can see that as per the diagram here. You've got these four eyelets worked into the rubber, one on each side, and one at the rear, and one at the front here. And that pulls the sole in around the boot. So it's a one size fits all affair. That's the idea behind these. And you have a tread pattern at the bottom, just a bobbled tread pattern, as you can see there. The sole is quite thick, the uppers are not. And then you have 1976 stamped in there, the date, as you can see. These were not very effective. The, I've read literature of the time stating that these are, I think it's actually in Survive to Fight, that the MBC boot is recognised as being completely useless in terms of moving around and fighting in. Not so bad if you're in a static position or just, um, you know, st stood around not moving too much. But the minute you want to actually be um, running or moving with any energy, uh, they're not very good. They work loose and they slip about and not an ideal design. So a lot of changes will be made to this design going forward to try and make them more secure around the foot. You'd end up with a fishtail at the back with two eyelets and various other things. That's a topic for a future video. That's the MBC boot number one Mark II, which obviously is to be used in conjunction with the suit MBC number one Mark II. So that's an overview of the number one Mark II MBC suit. Hopefully you found that interesting. It's a, another step in progression from the CB suit in Britain's MBC protective clothing and equipment. So hopefully this will build up into a little bit of a timeline. I may, might make a, an abridged video looking at all of them in comparison at some point in the future. I certainly intend to do that with the boots uh, to give an idea of how the design changed to try and make them more usable. Um, I'm not sure that that was ever really uh, a success, but certainly a lot of changes were introduced in the boots to try and make them more functional and field. So that's probably worth a, a separate video in its own right. For the moment, I hope you found this video interesting. If you have and you'd like to see more from the channel, please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, the little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can Facebook, Instagram. If you really like my uploads and you would like to support the channel, you can Patreon and PayPal are both linked down below. And as I always say, a huge thank you to everybody who supports the channel using those methods. Thank you very much, all of you. It's very much appreciated. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below as well. If you'd like to get in contact but you don't really use social media, there is, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.